Hello, I am Dr. Susan Bayless, optometrist and director of contact lens services at the New England Eye Institute, clinical affiliate of the New England College of Optometry. And I am Dr. Alangis Michaud, optometrist and professor at the University of Montreal School of Optometry. Thank you for joining us for this brief presentation introducing a breaking through technology in the world of contact lenses. Today's modern rigid lenses present an effective option for resolving the day-to-day -day problems we face in our clinics, such as end-of-the-day dryness, visual fluctuation, and discomfort, all of which led lens wearers to drop out. Now, large diameter gas permeable lenses offer the unique opportunity to better serve the needs of your patients. They represent the true future of contact lens industry. After fitting just a few pairs of this new and innovative design, you may find that large diameter GP contact lenses can meet the needs of at least 60% of your current contact lens wearers. Let's review some of the benefits of this new design. One Fit PNA Mini Scleral Lens is specifically designed to fit normal prolate corneas. The lens vaults the cornea and limbus and rests on the conjunctiva tucked under both the upper and lower lids. The lens is as comfortable as a soft lens and has all of the benefits of a gas permeable lens, including crisp, sharp vision. When fit and cared for properly, it does not dehydrate, absorbs fewer deposits than a soft lens, keeps the cornea hydrated during all wearing hours, will not allow any foreign body entrapment, and provides ample oxygen to alleviate hypoxia. Although OneFit PNA is designed with the purpose of vaulting a given corneal topography with an optimal sag height, the lens is specified by the value of its base curve in millimeters to make the fitting process simple and user-friendly. The vault and peripheral system of this mini scleral lens are specifically designed to accommodate corneas with a normal prolate profile, such as astigmatism, post grafts with prolate pattern, or moderately irregular corneas, like emergent or frust keratoconus cases. For highly irregular corneas, such as ectasia, one-fit cone series is preferred. Ideal candidates will prefer to wear contact lenses as their primary method of visual correction. Your focus should be patients who are not satisfied with their current soft or gas perm lenses and those who see halos and glare with their current lenses. OneFit PNA Mini Scleral Lens is ideal for athletes and active youth and adults needing lenses for sports and outdoor activities, particularly where they are exposed to dust, wind, or any such environment. They are also ideal for corneal gas perm intolerant patients and soft lens patients experiencing end of day dryness or diminished vision performance. One fit is designed to be simple and easy to fit. After fitting only a few cases, you should feel familiar with how to fit it and how to troubleshoot any problems that may occur. One fit is supported by the conjunctiva and the fluid layer under the lens rather than by the cornea. It is designed to vault the entire corneal surface including the limbal area. However, clearance over the cornea varies from the center to the periphery to optimize oxygen transmission to the tissue, especially over the limbus where the stem cells are located. Current published work indicates that fluid layer thickness is an important concern with scleral lenses. With an estimated DK value of 80, excessively thick fluid layer under the lens can deprive the cornea and stem cells of sufficient oxygenation. Keeping the Harvitt, Bonanno, and Holden Mertz criteria in mind, one fit was designed to maximize oxygen transmission when combining the lens and tear layer thickness. For this reason, the lens is thinner over the limbus compared to other designs. Its unique geometry reduces the tear layer from the center out to the limbal area. Optimum results in fit and corneal health are achieved with a clearance of 150 to 175 microns at the apex of the cornea or in the area where the cornea is steepest, such as with a host graft corneal junction with limbal clearance not exceeding 40 microns. The lens peripheral edge should align with the conjunctiva 
One fit is manufactured in materials offering a minimum permeability of 100 dK. The lens diameter should be so that it exceeds the cornea by at least one millimeter in each meridian. And finally, the lens periphery should align with the conjunctiva to ensure there is no impingement or edge standoff. We recommend an inside-out six-step approach, taking you from start to finish in the fitting process. Trial lenses are required to fit one-fit lenses and will help you to quickly and accurately determine the final lens parameters to order, saving valuable chair time. The first step is to look at ocular parameters, corneal diameter and curvatures. For the latter, topography is recommended to assess the overall corneal shape. However, if topography is not available in your practice, you can start the fitting process with central care readings measured manually or with automated keratometry. Begin by determining the diameter of the lens to be fit. The lens must exceed the cornea by one millimeter in every meridian. Use the nomogram of the fitting guide to help you select the proper diameter. Note that the standard diameter of one fit PNA lens is 14.3 millimeters. This will be the preferred diameter in the majority of fits. Unless otherwise indicated, the trial lenses are 14.3 millimeters. For the base curve, select your initial trial lens of 0.3 millimeters steeper than flat K you have measured. Fill the bowl of the lens with non-preserved saline solution tinted with fluorescein. Apply the lens using a plunger for scleral lenses. Once the lens is on the eye, quickly evaluate if the lens is centered and if it covers the cornea well. If the lens is too small, one fit is available in larger diameter up to 14.9 mm. If the fit looks good, allow the lens to settle for at least 20 minutes before assessing other parameters. The lens will recess slightly into the conjunctiva as it finds its equilibrium. It is crucial to let the lens stabilize on the eye before evaluating the fit. After 20 minutes, Continue with an inside-out approach. Evaluate the central clearance first. Your target is a clearance of 150 to 175 microns without exceeding 200 and no less than 150 microns. Using an anterior OCT is the preferred way to accurately evaluate the clearance between the lens and the cornea. If this is not an option, use an optic section under the white light at 40 degree angle and compare the fluid thickness with the thickness of the lens. The trial lens is 280 microns thick, so look for a fluid layer that is no less than half the lens thickness. If you do not have enough clearance, select a steeper base curve. The one-fit lens design is highly predictable. Every 0.1 millimeter of change in the base curve will impact the clearance by 30 to 35 microns. For example, if you get only 60 microns of central clearance, you need 100 another 100 microns to reach the 160 microns goal. This represents three steps of steepening, so the next lens to try should be 0.3 millimeters steeper than your initial fit. On the other hand, if you get too much clearance, let's say 240 microns, you have to select a flatter base curve. In this example, our first lens exceeds ideal clearance by 60 microns. Therefore, the next lens selected will be 0.2 millimeters flatter. There is no need to worry about other parameters. The design of the one fit allows for adjustments of the peripheries with any variation on the base curve. For flatter lenses, peripheries come flatter, and for steeper lenses, they are adjusted automatically. Once you have achieved optimal central clearance, scan the overall corneal surface for areas of touch. There should be absolutely no bearing on the cornea. Bearing on the cornea will result in corneal warpage, discomfort, and erosion. The one-fit lens is a mini-scleral lens, not a corneal scleral, and is designed to vault entirely over the cornea without touching it. If you see an area of touch, you must increase the clearance over this area, even if this means having greater than 200 microns centrally. As we said, the one-fit is designed to minimize the clearance at the limbo level in order to maximize oxygen transmission over this very sensitive area where stem cells are located, as well as allow for a smooth landing on the adjacent conjunctiva. 
Evaluate clearance in the limbal area under white light, the optic section the, of the slit lamp. As with the cornea, allow no touch on the limbus. Remember, if the clearance is less than 25 microns, fluorescein may not be seen, particularly with smaller diameter lenses. Ideally, OCD scans will reveal whether or not there is clearance of the limbus. Otherwise, evaluate the lens behavior during follow-up visits. A lack of staining at the limbal level indicates that clearance is adequate and there is no need to make any change. Conversely, ring staining pattern or any signs of tissue compression at the limbal level are signs that the lens is too close to the surface and the vault in that area must be increased. First, try a lens with a larger diameter, that means a 14.3 mm versus a 14.0 for the Kona series, and a 14.6 versus 14.3 for the PNA series. The modified geometry of the larger lens will increase the vault over the limbal area. If this change is not sufficient to fix the problem, and the central clearance still does not exceed 175 microns, select a steeper base curve with the larger diameter. Please note, there is no need to compensate base curve and power values for diameter changes of less than 0.4 millimeter. However, changing the diameter from 14.0 to 14.6 millimeter would require the base curve to be flattened by 0.1 millimeter and the power to be modified accordingly by a half diopter. After selecting the base curve that provides optimal clearance between 150 and 175 microns, evaluate the edge lift. Look for conjunctival alignment to ensure there is no edge standoff or peripheral seal off. This image represents an optimal conjunctival alignment with no edge standoff or peripheral sealing or blanching. Here we see an OCT view of optimal edge landing on the conjunctiva. This is another OCT view of excessive edge standoff causing discomfort. And again, through the OCT, we see an edge that is too steep causing conjunctival compression with the potential for peripheral seal off and blanching. To troubleshoot peripheral curve issues, first change the base curve value. Second, change the peripheral edge lift profile. Edge standoff will cause tear meniscus to break up at the edge of the lens and excessive movement when performing the push-up test. It will also cause discomfort to the patient. And finally, air bubbles which can invade the area under the lens edge when blinking. We elaborate more on the push-in test in the next segment. To remedy the situation, first, refit a lens with a base curve value 0.1 mm steeper and reassess apical clearance. Make sure it does not exceed 200 microns. If the problem persists, order a lens with an edge lift of steep 1 or steep 2 according to the severity of the standoff. If the tear meniscus breakup is just at the periphery of the lens, specify an edge lift of steep 1. If the tear meniscus breakup extends under the lens 0.2 mm or more, Specify an edge lift of steep 2. Peripheral seal off can cause vessel compression, blanching, and high resistance to no movement at all with the push in test. Upon insertion, a tight peripheral edge will feel comfortable but will cause tight lens syndrome within a few hours of wear. To address this, first refit a lens with a base curve value that is 0.1 millimeter flatter and reassess the apical clearance, making sure it is no less than 150 microns. If the problem persists, order a lens with an edge lift flat one. A simple test to demonstrate good conjunctival alignment is to apply gentle pressure on the conjunctiva and observe how easy it is to create a gap with the back surface of the lens. Be careful not to apply too much pressure on the conjunctiva or it may cause air to seep under the lens. Release the pressure and watch the conjunctiva realign itself with the back surface of the lens. It is important to evaluate the lens-conjunctiva relationship by performing a push-in test. 
Do so by applying gentle pressure on the lower conjunctiva. This is the in movement. And then, while applying this pressure, push the lens up. The lens should offer little to no resistance and exhibit 0.5 to 1 millimeter of movement, not with blink, but under the push-up pressure. If the lens moves too much, this could be the result of either an excessively flat edge or the lens is too steep without indenting the conjunctiva. Let's review how to resolve these issues. In this example, we see an excessively flat edge. To remedy this, steepen the base curve with a central clearance not exceeding 200 microns. If the problem persists, keep the steeper base curve and order a lens with an edge lift that is steep 1 or steep 2. Here we see the fit is too steep, but the lens is not indenting the conjunctiva. In this case, we would flatten the base curve with a central clearance of no less than 150 microns. If the problem persists, keep the flatter base curve and order a lens with an edge lift that is flat 1. If the lens is not moving, the fit could be too steep and indenting the conjunctiva. Or, after several hours of wear, the lens has settled too close to the cornea, creating a seal at the limbal level. Let's review how to resolve these issues. In this case, the fit is too steep and the lens is indenting the conjunctiva. To remedy, flatten the base curve with a central clearance of no less than 150 microns. If the problem persists, keep the flatter base curve and order a lens with an edge lift that is flat 1. In this example, the lens has settled too close to the cornea after several hours of wear, creating a seal at the limbal level. Please note that central clearance can decrease up to 75 microns during wear. To correct this, steepen the base curve and or enlarge the diameter with a central clearance not exceeding 200 microns. Another test is to try rotating the lens. Place your finger at the 6 o'clock position on the, lower edge, on the lower edge of the lens and rotate it back and forth from temporal to the nasal sides. There should be no resistance to the movement confirming perfect alignment with the lens and the conjunctiva. Once the fitting process is done, ask the patient about comfort. A properly fit lens should be really comfortable as a soft one. Even for first-time lens wearer, lens awareness might be present for several minutes, but certainly not for hours. Assuming proper insertion technique, true discomfort is a sign of a bad fit, most likely caused by a lens that is too flat, and you should revisit the previous four steps before moving on. As with all specialty contact lenses, over-refract after the optimal lens is settled on the eye to determine the appropriate power. Retinoscopy is recommended to begin the over-refraction, followed by spherocylindrical over-refraction, monocularly, then binocularly. This lens is designed to mask up to three and a half diopters of corneal astigmatism. However, some individual corneal profiles will not completely be compensated by the fluid under the lens. One fit is not available with toric correction. The presence of residual refractive astigmatism is invariably caused by a clearance that is too shallow or by flexure of the lens, as evidenced by keratometry readings over the lens. If this occurs, reevaluate baseline data taken from topography or K readings to make sure you have selected the appropriate lens. If possible, based on the clearance observed, steepen the base curve to increase central clearance. If there is lens flexure, specify an increased center thickness of 0.05 millimeters. Increase the lens diameter and the clearance up to 200 microns for a 14.3 millimeter lens. If none of these recommendations work, consider correcting residual stigmatism in glasses over the contact lenses. Other circumstances where refractive astigmatism could be compensated with glasses are when the corneal astigmatism exceeds 3.5 diopters, lenticular astigmatism becomes apparent after the corneal astigmatism is fully compensated by the contact lens, or you find lens flexure that is not compensated by an increased thickness. 
When ordering, you need to specify base curve, power, diameter, edge profile, and center thickness if not standard. If the central clearance seems appropriate within the recommended 150 to 175 microns, but the limbal area presents with a bearing indicated by staining at the follow-up visit, increase clearance in the limbal area by selecting a larger diameter, for example, 14O to 14.3. Red and painful eyes after a few hours of wear, otherwise known as tight lens syndrome, is caused by complete seal off at the periphery. Order a flatter base curve lens and or select flatter peripheral curves, keeping apical clearance at a minimum of 150 microns after the lens has had time to settle. When bubbles occur on application, there is not enough fluid in the lens before insertion or, or there was too much liquid that spilled off the lens during handling. Revisit the handling procedures with the patient. Mixing non-preserved saline solution with more viscous non-preserved artificial tears can help. There is a slight possibility that the base curve is also too steep. Reassess the lens and evaluate a flatter base curve if needed. If the lens is not comfortable, this could be caused by edge standoff from a flat fit. According to your evaluation of the central clearance, select a base curve that is 0.1 to 0.2 steeper as needed. If the symptoms persist, keeping the steeper base curve, specify an edge configuration that is steep 1 or steep 2 depending on the severity of the edge standoff. If you see corneal staining, it could be caused by the use of preserved saline solution. Re-educate your patient on the need for non-preserved saline. If there is staining along the limbus, then the lens is touching in this area. To remedy, increase the diameter and select a steeper base curve by 0.1 mm. Remember, adjust the power of the lens minus a half diopter for every 0.1 mm increase in the base curve. If vision is insufficient, make sure that there are no bubbles under the lens and check for anterior surface deposits in areas of non-wetting. If any of these are found, re-educate the patient on lens care or consider recommending hydrogen peroxide solution. If none of these causes are present, then perform a spherocylindrical over-refraction to identify any residual astigmatism. If the lens is difficult to remove or even stuck on the eye, it is possible the fit is either too flat, creating a seal at the limbal level, or excessively steep, creating a seal at the peripheral level. Revisit the fit. If the fit is good, ask the patient to look up before removal and apply gentle pressure on the conjunctiva at the lens edge. This will allow air to seep under the lens and break the seal, making lens removal easy. If the problem persists, consider ordering a lens with flatter peripheries to improve tear exchange. This could also occur on marginal dry eye patients after a full day of wear. Have the patient lubricate the ocular surface before removing the lenses. If the lens seems optimal at the fit, but there is no clearance after eight hours of wear, there is too much fluid exchange under the lens. To minimize this, steepen the base curve and or steepen the periphery. If not possible, consider using a more viscous, non-preserved solution to fill the bowl at application. It is unusual to find a breeze or mucin under the lens after several hours of wear. This is more an issue with larger lenses. The likely cause of this accumulation is a restriction of the tear flow under the lens. Consider selecting flatter base curve and our peripheral curves to optimize tear exchange. Unless otherwise specified, the trial lens diameter is 14.3 mm and the base curve ranges from 6.9 to 8.3 mm with varying powers according to the base curve value. 
File lenses are stored dry in their respective cases. Before each use, it is imperative that you clean and condition each lens thoroughly. To clean, apply a few drops of an approved GP lens cleaner on both surfaces and gently rub the lenses between the fingers or in the palm of your hand for 10 to 15 seconds. Rinse off the cleaner with saline and proceed with conditioning. To condition, use the same method as cleaning. Apply a few drops of an approved GP conditioning solution and rub each lens for 15 to 20 seconds. Rinse lens with non-preserved saline solution. The trial lens is now ready for use. On behalf of Blanchard Contact Lens Company, thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. Blanchard consultants are available to assist you, and additional resources are found in your fitting guide and on the web at blanchardlab.com.